we'll be doing the first stanza. One, two, go. Arise, oh. <laughs> it once again apology for starting late we were actually waiting for the journalist our guest i must say we're here on time and i'm pleased to note that a round of applause for our guest please all right um without further ado we're going right to the crux of the matter um before we start i would like to introduce our guest, our guest of honor, the Honorable Minister of State for Environment, Barrister Sharon Ikeazo. A round of applause, please. <laughs> Seated by her side is the Honorable Commissioner for Health, Lagos State, Professor Akin Abayomi. <laughs> and on the other side of her, we have the CEO, President World Aid, Mr. Peter Knight. I am Dr. Mark Ofua. Um, I'll be on the mic today and I'm a consultant to World Aid Nigeria. We also would want to recognize the presence of all heads of government agencies and parastatals here. Please put your hands for them. I know we have environment well represented here. Um, yes, we have on the high table also our wild aid ambassador she's actually the first of the ambassadors stephanie linus we also have in our midst the um, ambassadors um, i know I, we have miss tourism nigeria here a round of applause for her please um, Distinguished invited guests, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to this occasion. It's one in which I take serious pride in. It's the largest, it's, going, it's the launch of the largest drive for wildlife, for conservation in Nigeria. And we're taking this message not just in Lagos, to the whole of Nigeria and not just Nigeria, to West Africa and Africa, and we will make serious impact for wildlife in Nigeria. Um, right now, please, I'm going to call on the Wild Aid President, Mr. Peter Knight, to speak about the Wild Aid campaign in Nigeria. Thank you. It's a great pleasure to be here today. Let me just remove my mask when I speak to you. Um, if we could just put up the PowerPoint, please. It's always a pleasure to come to, to Lagos, and uh, I actually spent New Year here, so it was a very fun time, and it's great to be back. So thank you very much. So we're Wild Aid. If you want to look us up afterwards, jointheherd.org. You can look about information about this campaign and other campaigns around the world. And these are the goals of the campaign that we're running. We want to create public and political will for wildlife conservation. We want to engage youth and the middle classes in particular. We want to promote effective law enforcement, local conservation projects, as there are many very successful conservation projects in Nigeria. And if you can turn the mic down a bit, it's beating back. Um, and also wildlife tourism. Wildlife tourism is very important economically for many African countries, and we believe in the future 
it would be possible to develop wildlife tourism here in New Nigeria as well and greatly boost tourism to Nigeria. And we also want to reduce the demand for illegal bushmeat. And that's for two reasons. First, need to protect the endangered animals that are in the illegal bushmeat trade, but also to protect human health. Zoonotic disease, of course, has been very prevalent recently. COVID, we still don't know where it, we know it came from bats, we don't know how it got to human beings. But there's very serious risk of not just COVID, but things like Ebola and other diseases which come through the wildlife trade. So we do this by working with media, by working with prominent individuals, and in different countries all over Africa. I'd just like to welcome our, our latest guest. Hi, Manuela. She should be familiar to all of you with amazing co comedy. Please welcome Manuela. Thank you. So we'd also like to say thank you and welcome to our partners on this program, Ministry of Environment, the National Park Service, Lagos State Government, Nesria, Nigerian Customs, and the NCDC. Thank you for all your cooperation and collaboration and the great welcoming you've given us to work here in Nigeria. In addition, we've worked with other nonprofit organizations like the Nigerian Conservation Foundation uh, and various other nonprofits working here in Nigeria. These are just some of the partners in this program. And then with the media itself. So we're doing various different projects with the media in Nigeria to promote coverage of conservation and more in-depth reporting on environmental issues within Nigeria. So you probably know there are national parks all over Nigeria. Um, and these national parks are stunningly beautiful in many cases. But in many cases, unfortunately, the wildlife is very depleted. These are just some of the numbers for you. Sadly, the rhinoceros, the giraffe, the cheetah are all extinct in Nigeria. They were here once, but they're all extinct. There's only 30 to 50 lions left in Nigeria. 400 forest elephants, 100 savanna elephants. These are very precarious numbers. 100 cross-river gorillas only, and up to 2,300 chimpanzees. So these numbers are very low, but having said that, it is possible to rebuild these numbers. Some of you will know that the white rhinoceros was down to 50 individuals in the 1960s and now has 22,000. So with the right protection, the right laws, the right law enforcement, the right public awareness, we can turn these things around and rebuild Nigeria's wildlife populations. In recent years, many of you also know, our friends from Customs here today have made a number of very significant seizures of ivory and pangolin scales. And right now it seems like traffickers are using Lagos as a route to smuggle ivory and pangolins, mainly to Asia. And there is a significant market within Nigeria for illegal bushmeat. And that, as we mentioned earlier, has two risks. One, the extinction of some of these animals, and sometimes not in ways that you think about it. Lions get caught in bushmeat traps set for other animals. Elephants in Uganda, I've seen elephants with their trunks half sawn off because they've got caught in snares set for illegal bushmeat. So illegal bushmeat is not just the animals it catches, it's also the others get caught up in the process. And then there is the risk, as we mentioned, of zoonotic disease. So I'd like to show you a short video about the program. Nigeria is Africa's most populous nation, with cultural and media influence throughout the entire continent. But it's facing a conservation crisis. Its wildlife and national parks are highly endangered by poaching and illegal logging. It's the epicenter of the illegal trade in ivory and pangolin scales. With tons of products representing thousands of animals seized in recent times by customs. It has strong demand for illegal bushmeat that endangers animals and risks introduction of zoonotic disease. But Nigeria could be a conservation leader. With Lagos leading the way, Nigeria is updating its wildlife legislation. It's improving its wildlife law enforcement, and it's revolutionizing its public awareness. WildAid and its Nigerian partners are launching the largest ever conservation awareness program in Africa to drastically increase coverage of wildlife issues. Working with government agencies, working with the media, 
what if we decided to protect our wildlife? After all, this is a multi-billion dollar industry currently employing over 3.6 million people on the African continent alone. Working with prominent Nigerian ambassadors. Report suspicious activity and wildlife crime. To promote Nigeria's national parks. To promote wildlife law enforcement. To raise awareness of the dangers of illegal bushmeat. And to promote alternatives. Nigeria can go from crisis to becoming a leader in conservation. So let's do the right thing. Tell your families and friends to say no to illegal bushmeat. Keep them wild. Keep them wild. Keep them wild. Keep us safe. And keep us safe. Thank you. Thank you. So as you can see, though the situation is quite grim right now, we have the seeds of hope here. We have the ability, what I've seen from coming to Nigeria for the last two years is incredible ingenuity, a, a drive, uh, an enthusiasm in people that can turn this situation around. And always in these cases, it depends on strong leadership. And I can tell you from having worked in 40 different countries around the world, your Minister of the Environment is a strong leader in this area. So please, yes, that deserves applause. It is not always easy to stand out for the environment. And what the minister has done has been incredible. So it's now my great honor to show you a short message from the minister and then to introduce her. Nigeria still has some breathtaking natural areas and national parks. These forests and wild places help maintain healthy ecosystems, clean rivers, rainfall, and even the oxygen we breathe. But if we allow our wildlife to be poached and our forests to be cut illegally, we may lose this forever. So let's do the right thing. Tell your families and friends not to buy illegal bushmeat or illegal timber from our protected forests. It's time to save our wildlife and forests in order to protect our natural heritage. Keep them wild, keep us safe. Please welcome the minister. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Honorable Commissioner for Health, the person I call the One Health Approach Apostle, the DG of Nesria, the President of World Aid, Mr. Peter and his team, and our dear ambassadors, Stephanie Linus and dearest Emanuela who has kept us healthy with laughter. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure for me to join you all here today at the launch of this uh, public awareness campaign against wildlife crime in Nigeria. This event is coming at a time when efforts need to be doubled to restore, conserve, and sustainably manage our valued wildlife and biodiversity resources, of which we are blessed with amazing biodiversity in Nigeria. From our swamp forests to our mangrove forests, to our coastal vegetation, lowland forests, savanna, Guinea savanna, and even the mountain forests that we have in the areas of Taraba. There is so much unique vegetation in the Joss Plateau, as well as the mountain uh, vegetation of uh, the highlands of Mambila and Obudu. Each of these ecosystems have its own unique characteristics of wild fauna, flora, and a huge collection of marine and fresh aquatic uh, species. But statistics have shown us that Nigeria is losing a lot of this. From the statistics on Nigeria, we have 91 species of endemic flora belonging to 44 families. But to the IUCN uh, red list of uh, 2013, Nigeria has a total of 309 threatened species. And these are across mammals, such as the pangolins, the lions, elephants, and manatees. From the birds, we have the 
gray uh, parrots, the gray African parrots, and the black crowned uh, crane. I don't know how many of you know about the black crowned crane. That is our national bird. We have a national bird, and we have a national plant, and all these are going instinct, and we must reverse all this. From the reptiles to the amphibians to the mollusks and plants, all this we are losing. The, bio the biodiversity that we have in our seven national parks of Old Oyo, Cross River, Gashaka Gumchi, Okomu, Chad Basin, and Kainji Lake, and Kamuku, we must do everything to preserve this. And I'm glad to say that for, uh, through our conservation efforts, Mr. President has approved 10 new national parks from existing forest reserves in Nigeria. And I forgot to recognize the Conservator General and the, uh, the park uh, rangers that are here today, Caroline Iroluri. I'm glad that you're here, and we must applaud you for all the work you're doing at the national parks. Besides our national parks, Nigeria also has four UNESCO-approved biosphere reserves. These we have in the Cross River State, and we also have the Hadejia and Gurubade Biosphere Reserve, straddling between Yobe and Jigawa states. And just giving you a background of the vast uh, and amazing biodiversity areas we have in Nigeria. We all know that biodiversity plays a vital role in our economy, ecology, and social lives. We use it as food, fiber, domestic and commercial products, medicine and for aesthetics and culture. Agriculture as well, knowledge and industrial processes. You'll agree with me that our survival and overall well-being depends on how sustainably the environment and its biodiversity are managed. However, we do have serious environmental challenges that have led to the loss of biodiversity and this threatens our very existence. Habitat change, over-exploitation, pollution, and invasive alien species, and of course climate change are drivers of this biodiversity loss. But the alarming rate of over-exploitation of these natural resources calls for very urgent, increased, and proactive actions to reverse this trend. Poaching, possessing, taking, trading at supply or selling, and consumption has put Nigeria on the spotlight of wildlife crime, and we must do something to reverse this. So our collaborative efforts with organizations such as Wild Aid would help us to address this menace. This campaign by Wild Aid represents one of such actions that we believe is bearing fruit. And also bearing in mind the quantum of impacts Wild Aid crime has left on our biodiversity and the ecosystem if we all join forces in this laudable initiative, quite a lot will be achieved in rescuing and protecting these animals, most of which are already facing extinction. And this morning, or late this afternoon, I actually fell in love with a baby of a pangolin that they had to pull off my arm. And I hope each and every one of you here will try and have an encounter with that pangolin and see that beautiful creature, so you understand. Because so a lot of Nigerians, I realize, except those who are in the habit of eating it, do not know what a pangolin is. So we must draw uh, awareness for such uh, animals. We all seated here, majority of us, I must confess, we are all culprits of bushmeat consumption. As this is a phenomenon in both rural and urban areas, but this is posing serious environmental risks and extinction of threatened species. Also, in-country and transboundary trafficking is quite alarming. You heard uh, Peter Knight when he was talking. We don't really need to hear him. We all know all this. It's out there in international media. Nigeria has been tagged a transit hub for this illegality. This phenomenon also constitutes high security risk, public health risks with the spread of zoonotic diseases such as Lassa fever, which we are currently battling with now in Nigeria, Ebola virus, 
and recently the COVID-19. Nigeria as a signatory to the uh, CITES, that's the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species of Fauna and Flora. We are committed to the implementation and adherence to the CITES laws and regulations, as well as to other global agreements, conventions, and treaties focused on conservation of biodiversity. We in Nigeria have played a vital role in the creation of the West African strategy on combating wildlife crime. This is in our position as the chair of the steering committee responsible for establishing this important regional strategy. We will not relent in our efforts to regularly review, develop, and implement the appropriate policy, legal, and institutional framework as necessary, just as we are taking bold steps to implement the recently validated national strategy on combating wildlife and forest crime in Nigeria. And this is supported by the UNODC, and we'll be launching this on International Day for Wildlife, which will be on the 3rd of March. So being conscious of the multi-stakeholder approach, multi-stakeholder nature of the fight against wildlife crime, the federal government has continued to maintain collaborative partnerships with key stakeholders within and outside the country, wild aid being one of such uh, great partners, have not only uh, complemented our efforts, but have also proven the efficacy of public campaign and awareness creation that it is inevitable in the quest to combat this menace. The Department of Forestry under the Ministry of Environment will continue to embark on public awareness and sensitization campaigns on CITES and also on uh, biodiversity uh, conservation, environmental protection, and sustainable development throughout the days that we have international days of celebration. We will also be reviewing our national biodiversity strategy and action plan immediately after the second part of the 15th uh, meeting of the Conference of Parties to the Convention on Biodiversity, and this will be in the first quarter of this year. This update, we hope, will integrate biodiversity into national uh, programs, and this will be aimed at reducing poverty and developing a secure future in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. Nigeria is also taking leadership uh, roles in seeking the adoption of bold international commitments for the recovery of biodiversity and for the expansion of protected areas to at least 30% by 2030 with matching funding commitments in the ongoing negotiation process of the post-2020 global biodiversity framework. This will provide opportunities for investments in Nigeria's ecosystems while preserving ecosystem services for future generations. So I hereby reiterate the federal government's commitment to tackling all environmental and climate change issues using nature-based solutions through sustainable management of forests, protection and conservation of biodiversity, improved agroforestry practices, as well as climate smart agriculture. The Ministry of Environment is currently embarking on a program of multiplication of viable species, and these are in snails and cane rats. We are piloting these in our outstations in Guagualada in the Federal Capital Territory, Akure in Ondo State, because as I say, we might be campaigning against uh, wildlife uh, consumption, but we must provide an, an alternative for our people. And this we're doing by piloting this uh, multiplication uh, of viable species. This will provide the alternative to wild animals and consequently pave the way to keep them in the wild. This program will also entail uh, capacity building of local, local communities and raising and multiplying some uh, wildlife uh, species as well. And we also integrate our people into uh, communities into conservation. Ladies and gentlemen, before I conclude, let me appreciate the government of Lagos State 
for their exemplary support and commitment to protecting our environment and biodiversity. I salute the state's uh, prompt intervention at the notorious Equifish market upon discovery that the market was being used for the sale of endangered species of animals. Your intervention has most probably stopped a potential risk of some zoonotic disease. Kudos to Lagos State. Uh, we must also work to actively promote and institutionalize the One Health approach, which recognizes the intrinsic connection between human health, animal health, and healthy, resilient natural systems. We believe the best way to prevent the, the next pandemic is to keep the wildlife in the wild. We in Nigeria aim to do this by focusing our efforts around the large-scale, long-term commitment to wildlife-rich places such as national parks. And uh, as an aside, tomorrow I leave for Benin. I'm heading to Okomu National Park to release about 45 uh, gray African parrots that were seized by the Nigerian customs and handed over to the national parks in Nigeria. Well-managed uh, parks will provide uh, security for people and wildlife, and it also establishes an enabling environment that can attract tourism, combat poaching, protect our biodiversity, and also deliver on all our international commitments. And this will create decent jobs, decent local jobs for our people. Before I end on Lagos State, I would like to thank the State Commissioner for Health, Professor Akia Bayami, for all your efforts in ensuring a healthy and safer environment for the people of Lagos State. I applaud Wild Aid for their efforts in combating illegal wildlife crime through this their awareness campaign and sensitization programs, which will in turn catalyze into stopping the consumption and trade of wildlife species. I am extremely happy to have been featured in the public service announcement that was just shown, and I'll be taking lessons from uh, Emanuela and Linus on my acting roles in future. <laughs> So I implore the Wild Aid to get more notable Nigerian influencers to join this campaign in order to have a wider reach. I thank you, Peter Knight, and of course, Linus and your team for organizing this event. And to our amazing ambassadors, Stephanie Linus and Emanuela. I met an Indian man. I can't remember where in the world. And the first thing was asking me about was Emanuela. I got to know you from the international side. You are amazing. Well done. So I thank you all for joining this campaign. And I thank you all for your kind attention. Each and every one of you here is an ambassador. And you can join this campaign to stop wildlife trade. And I forgot to mention my brother, the apostle of the environment, Magic Kodumi. Thank you for all you do. And, and your sanctuary, we should be able to create a lot more sanctuaries in Nigeria. God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you for your kind attention. And I will end with my favorite phrase, one world, one health. Thank you very much. Another round of applause for the Honorable Minister, please. Thank you very much. Um, before we go to the next, I just want to um, mention some honored guests amongst us here seated. Earlier on, I mentioned head of um, government parastatals. Um, please, a round of applause for Professor Ali Ujwaro, who is the Director General of Nesria. He's here seated with us. Please, a round the Acting Director General of Nesria. <laughs> Thank you very much. And then also we have um, Mr. Timothy Daniel John, Head of Wildlife and Scientist Management Department. Please, where is he? Thank you very much, sir. 
we have Mr. Rasak Kola Wale Adekola, the acting director of Forestry. Please, a uh, round of applause. Thank you very much, sir. Um, we have also seated um, Mr. Peter Thomas from the British Embassy. A round of applause for him. Um, my father in the conservation fight, Mr. Desmond Majakudumi. A round of applause. Thank you very much. Uh, we also have the conservator of parks, um, Madam Caroline S. Olori. Please, a round of applause for her. Thank you very much. I know we have other guests seated here, but as I have their names, I would call them up. Um, okay, thank you very much, ma'am, for that beautiful speech. And I'm going to call up next the, the next speaker. Now, people usually tell me in my fights for animals conservation, do you think we can actually stop bushmeat consumption in Nigeria? Do you think we can fight this trend? It's a culture. It's part of our culture. It's ingrained in our culture. And very smugly, I tell them, yes, we had human sacrifice in our culture. We had killing of twins in our culture. If we could put, do away with this deleterious aspect of our culture, then we can also do this. Um, please help me welcome the... Hon um, I like to describe him as the Deputy Incident uh, Commander of the COVID-19 Command Structure in Lagos State. He's the number one health officer in the state, the one health crusader. He is the Honorable Commissioner for Health, Lagos State, Professor Akin Abayomi. A round of applause, please. So good morning, everybody. Um, our dear Honorable Minister of State, um, Barrister Sharon Ikeazo, thank you very much for that wonderful speech and for what we can see as a budding potential career in acting. <laughs> the DG in Esria, you're welcome to Lagos. Um, the Conservator General, Madam Caroline, Nice to have you in Lagos. Uh, the representative of my colleague from the Ministry of Environment, Mr. Tunji Belo, is, rep is represented here by someone from the Lagos State Ministry of Environment. Of course, all the um, chief executives of Wild Aid, led by Peter Knight and your colleagues, thank you very much for initiating this program and bringing such an important issue to everybody's attention. Of course, Dr. Mark, thank you very much, the consultant to Wild Aid. Um, I've met Mark several times now, and in fact, we've released some pangolins together in the wilderness, and it was indeed a very exhilarating experience. Uh, heads of all government agencies and parastatals, the Wild Aid Nigerian ambassadors, especially uh, my namesake, Emanuela. <laughs> Uh, Stephanie Linus and Davido, who I believe is in the building somewhere, but we haven't seen him yet. I guess he'll make an entrance in his usual style. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen of the press, thank you very much to the organizers of Wild Aid for giving me an opportunity to come to address you on this very important occasion. Um, you might wonder what is a Commissioner for Health doing at a wildlife conservation uh, activity. Well, I hope and I think you've heard from the Minister of State that as a country now we don't see or we're trying not to see any distinction between human health and the health of the environment in what we describe as the One Health paradigm. And I'll refer to that a bit more as we speak. But as human beings, we are part of the ecosystem. I think sometimes we are mistaken when we think that we are outside of the ecosystem. We are part of the ecosystem. And so what we're trying to do here with this advocacy exercise is not only to save the ecosystem, but to save ourselves. 
Humanity can no longer stand in silence while the animals and the plant resources in the forests and other biomes um, are being exploited, abused, and depleted. It is very important that we stand together to speak against environmental degradation and wildlife destruction in Nigeria before it's too late. Extinction. Extinction means forever. When something goes extinct, it is gone forever. Something that God created to be part of life, to be part of our ecosystem, we as human beings have allowed that species or those group of species to disappear off the face of the earth because of some of our irresponsible activities. So every day this is happening. Countless rare plants and animals are going extinct. Destruction of all types of our ecosystems and lack of wildlife conservation, as you heard from the Minister of State, is a serious biosecurity threat that leads to increased likelihood of natural disasters, global warming, and significant change in our food production. The forest is also a natural reservoir for many kinds of unknown diseases. But a healthy ecosystem actually keeps this system in check and cleans the environment. We forget that the, the natural biomes look after themselves. We need to learn to respect the immense function and roles that the wilderness plays and that these are very important in protecting us as human beings. Wild animals, insects, birds, reptiles, amphibians belong in their ecosystem where they provide these protective roles. If we start to destroy the forests, we disrupt the harmony of nature. And when we disrupt the harmony of nature, then these wild species start to become in contact. These, the, the chances of them coming into contact with human beings start to increase. And then these pathogens that belong in the wilderness start to encroach on people in cities and towns. Now we know that we're going through extensive deforestation in Nigeria. They say we've deforested down to almost 6%. And that has been happening with a very alarming rate in the last 10 to 20 years. We used to have about 17,000 hectares of forest cover just about 15 years ago, and now we're down to 9,000 hectares. And the amount of destruction is increasing rapidly. Now, we know that forests convert carbon into oxygen, which you all know we need as human beings. Forests cool down the environment. They provide protection for numerous plants and animals, and most importantly, they create rain. I don't know if you all recognize the importance of the role of forests in capturing moisture and allowing clouds to form, which then generate rain. And this rain then replenishes our streams and our lakes and our rivers, which then flow down into the Atlantic Sea. The combination of extremely, of extremely high deforestation rates, increased temperatures, and decreased rainfall are all contributing to deforestation and desertification and drying out of our beautiful country, Nigeria. Desertification leads to loss of livelihood for millions of people. And this turns to competition for resources and inevitable conflict. And I can, you know, I think we can see, I don't want to be specific, but we can see that these scenarios are playing out across the country and creating problems and disrupting our peace and our security. Now, what are the causes of deforestation? I think the Honorable Minister has alluded to them. Um, we know what they mainly are. Bush burning, clearing of forests for agriculture, poaching, 
illegal logging, rapid urbanization. Our populations are expanding and we are expanding into wilderness in an unregulated way. We are experiencing the effect of climate change, drought, and when we see those kinds of things, then our biomes start to suffer. Of course, we need to grow things for our population to eat, but we need to do that in a manner that does not disrupt the ecosystems and the wilderness. So what are the consequences of biodiversity loss in Nigeria? We know that when you deplete biodiversity, we start to see increasing encounters between human beings and wildlife and the movement of some of these dangerous pathogens such as Ebola, Marburg, Lassa fever, and even COVID from the animal kingdom into human population. We know that 60% of infectious diseases are caused by zoonotic events. What do I mean by a zoonotic event? A zoonotic event is when you catch a, a, a virus or a bacteria or any other pathogen from a wild animal because there is an increased contact between human beings and these animals in the wild. Of course, biodiversity loss is costing us economic um, losses in terms of um, loss of our plant species, loss of our opportunities for tourism, and loss of the natural free gifts that we are naturally enjoying from these natural biomes. And if we are having severe climate change, then naturally our farmers are going to be on the rough end of the stick. There are numerous plants and animals and animal life forms that have medicinal properties. The common malaria tablet that we take nowadays is not chloroquine. It's a plant, it's a drug called artemisin. It comes from a plant, a plant that grows in Asia. Now, if we had allowed that plant to go extinct, millions of people would be dying from malaria now because chloroquine doesn't work anymore. So here is a perfect example of how a plant species that grows in the wild, that has been protected, that has not become extinct, is now a source of a medicinal product that is saving millions and millions of people from a dangerous infection called malaria, of course, that we're so familiar with in Africa. So how do we address biodiversity loss in Nigeria? We need to think very carefully about how we're going to reforest Nigeria. And you've heard from the Honorable Minister what the plans are moving forward after the convention. We need to protect the existing forests. We need to promote agroforestry as opposed to just bush burning, cutting down all our, all our uh, landed area and planting corn and cassava. There are many forms of agriculture that we can promote that can support um, uh, forestry in tandem with agriculture. Like what we're doing right now, we need to orientate the public. We need to make the public aware that we are in a very dire situation where if we don't take drastic steps, we could be heading to a precipice. We need to support conservation organizations, just like WildAid. And there are numerous other organizations, both local and, and international, that have their commitment towards this noble cause of protecting our natural biomes and our forestries. As a Ministry of Health, and you've just heard from the Honorable Ministry, Minister, that Lagos State is extremely serious about promoting the One Health paradigm. We must recognize the importance of the environment and aggressively promote this One Health paradigm, which says that you can only be as healthy as the environment in which you live and the food that you eat. Just imagine if you have a pet fish in a fish bowl and you don't keep its water clean or every day you go to the fish bowl and you pour a little bit of poison into the water bowl. At the end of the day, you're going to kill the fish. And this is what is happening to us as human beings. 
we are poisoning our environment slowly. And the One Health paradigm says we must holistically address human health in the context of environmental health and the health of the food products that we produce for our citizens to consume. In conclusion, can you imagine us living in a world where there are no plants, no forests, or no wild animals? Where we have to go to zoos and museums to show our children what we used to see when we were growing up, it's already happening. What I used to see as a child, I don't see such things anymore because we are drastically affecting the environment in which we live. This is what will transpire if we do not protect our wildlife and our ecosystems. Nature is God's gift to us. Every single living thing has a significant role it is playing in the ecosystem. Man has to protect the environment to maintain his existence. Remember, Mother Nature does not need man to exist, but man needs Mother Nature to survive. Nature has provided enough to meet our needs, but not our greed. Deforestation and eco-habitat destruction is now recognized to be an existential threat. In other words, our lives depend on it. And that poses a clear and very present danger to the future of humanity. Thank you very much for your attention. And God bless you all. Thank you very much, sir. Another round of applause for the Honorable Commissioner. Um, the Honorable Commissioner made a very salient point. Um, I remember my father telling me that when he was young and he would be going to school, there are times they get to school late because they would have to stop while herds of elephants would be crossing the road and then they would wait until the entire herd crosses before they go on to school. And this was about 40 odd years ago. Um, I don't know if I should be proud or ashamed to say, I saw my first elephant in Nigeria a couple of months ago, and we had to go into the dense forest in uh, Bauchi, Yankari Game Reserve, and we tracked them for almost 12 hours before we saw them. So in such a short while, we are having this large volume of disappearance. I'm glad we're here today to stem that tide and to save the species we have remaining. Thank you very much. Um, while he was speaking, we had the, uh, an important guest walk in, the Acting Consulate General of the German Embassy, Dr. Bernd. Please, a round of applause for him. Thank you very much. Um, we are showcasing our ambassadors next, and uh, while I was just speaking, I have notified another ambassador came in, and um, we want to welcome him. Please. Okay. So, um, while he's coming, we go right on. When I was reading out the protocols earlier on, I was saving the introduction of our premier ambassador, because I wanted to make it a bit, of, a bit flowery. Um, I'm going to call her now, Stephanie Linus. I think there is a thing of pride and a thing of worthy of notes to be the first ambassador. I mean, you're the first, very first that believed in a project. She is an international actress, film director and model, and she's also a member of the Order of the Federal Republic. Uh, would have a video play, and afterwards she would just give us one or two lines of words. Every wild animal serves a purpose in a balanced and functioning ecosystem. But demand for bushmeat can destroy that balance. Deforestation and trade in life wildlife puts us all at risk of disease outbreak like Ebola, Lassa fever and even COVID-19. 
We can all help prevent extinction and diseases by saying no to illegal bushmeat. Keep them wild and keep us safe. Ladies and gentlemen, the award-winning, Hollywood award-winning Stephanie Linus. Thank you very much. Um, the Honorable Minister of State for Environment, Barrister Sharon Picasso, and the Lagos State Health Commissioner, Professor Akin Aboemi, the President, White A, <laughs> Mr. Peter Knight, um, distinguished uh, ladies and gentlemen, my other ambassadors, members of the press, good afternoon to you all. Um, I am personally excited to be part of this campaign because I have seen wildlife tourism transform economics in Nigeria and I want that to be the level that we'll get to in Nigeria. I was deeply troubled when I learned about the immense suffering caused by bushmeat poaching on endangered species. I want things to change and that's why I'm joining this campaign to raise awareness about wildlife conservation in Nigeria. I want my children and yours <laughs> to grow up to see lions and elephants. I'm sure if I ask, how many of you have seen a lion and elephant? Not a lot of us, except maybe if you've traveled abroad or gone to a, a, a zoo or something. I haven't even seen one until now, except for the elephant that you showed me. You know, and I was shocked when I saw the video. I was excited, like, do we have elephants in Nigeria? I was screaming. I'm like, I've never really seen that before until they sent me the video. And I was actually really proud. So uh, we can only achieve this if we stop killing endangered species and destroying our forest. Our wildlife is an essential part of our natural heritage. It is sad that we have lost a lot of our wildlife and forests, but there is hope if only we can do the right thing. So I urge you all to please join this campaign. Tell as many people as possible that it is important that we keep our environment safe for all of us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Um, we have uh, another of ambassador. He's here now. I would quickly call him up. He needs no introduction. As he walks in, he will introduce himself. Um, is his video ready? <laughs> Although he needs no introduction, I would like to give him an introduction because we talked about leadership. We have one of the leading musicians and musical talents on the entire African continent and around the world. Please welcome Davido. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, um, I'm very, very excited. And I'm happy to be, you know, part of this initiative. Um, everybody knows I'm all for, you know, the betterment of the environment, the betterment of the people, the betterment of Nigeria. Um, you know, I remember growing up and just, you know, traveling with my family, visiting different countries, and, you know, going to the zoo. You know, one of my earliest moments with my father and my mom was, you know, visiting the zoo. And I remember one time we visited the zoo in Ibadan. Um, you know, so it's something that I feel like sometimes even when people come to, to like, Africa and come to Nigeria and they're like, ah, where are the lions? Where are the... Sometimes we take it offensive. You know, but, you know, it's true. You know, so that's what, you know, the, the movies, you know, <laughs> Lion King, per se, you know, in movies and documentaries that we watch, you know, sometimes we take it offensive, but I feel like there should be a place where, you know, obviously there are places like, you know, this hotel, VI, commercial places, nightclubs, um, conservation centers, event centers, but there should also be a place where they can go and see these kind of things. And it's very sad when you go to like, I shot a video not so long ago in, um, it was, I think, close to Ajao. And I was like, where are all the animals? Where are all the, you know, they were like, oh, more. They are, they are going <laughs> small by small. You know, I feel like 
you know, that's one of the things we should preserve. So I'm I'm very excited to be part of this. I feel like if we all put our hands together, we can save these animals, put them in a safer place, a place where people that come in can go and look at them being treated well. You know what I'm saying? Even when we're walking on the road, you don't want to be see a, a, a lion skinny. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to see a well fed lion that we see on National Geographic and things like that. So if we all put our hands together, you know, with amazing people on this board, like I can see myself. What's up? How are you? Um, I feel like it will be amazing and I'm excited. So God bless you guys. Let's all put our hands together to save these animals and make them safer for this environment and for us as well. And for the betterment for Nigeria, for Africa, and for the world. God bless you guys. There's nothing better than the roar of your fans. But in Nigeria, there's a roar that will not be heard again. With fewer than 50 lions left in the wild, they could be extinct in the next few years. From loss of habitat and prey, and snares set for illegal bushmeat. Please say no to illegal bushmeat. And let's keep the roar alive for Nigeria. Poaching steals from us all. What's cute, harmless, and depends on its mother for food and protection? Well, me of course. But also a shy little creature called the pangolin. Hundreds of thousands of pangolins are hunted and killed every year just for their meat and scales. If we continue this way, the pangolins will soon disappear. We can't allow this to happen. Tell your families and friends to say no to illegal bush meat from pangolins and other protected animals. Keep them wild. Keep us safe. Heard what's going on when they understand there's only 50 lions left there's only 500 elephants they all care about it so if we all work together we can solve this we can take this forward to the great credit of this great nation thank you very much we can do q a in a minute and then we'll do photographs afterwards thank you so for the q a session with the journalist we're going to be very fast well when it's your turn go straight to the point protocol duly observed and then uh, we'll list, they will write the, quest the questions out and then the appropriate people would answer. Repeated questions would not be attended because they've been addressed first and all that. So please, if you have any questions, can we have a show of hands amongst the journalists? I'll take it that there are no questions. We are perfectly in the clear. All right then, so um, closing remarks from Peter Knight and then photo ops. <laughs> that was my closing remarks. Um, when you know me, I don't like to go on for too long. So we are gonna do some photo opportunities outside with the big pictures. So if members of the press would like to come and some of our panel will be able to take some photos for you, um, and then we'll have refreshments afterwards. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Thank you.
Illegal bushmeat is on sale in our cities, risking extinction and our health. We've become a centre for ivory and pangolin smuggling. So please report wildlife crime and say no to illegal bushmeat. And let's work together to win for Nigeria. Keep them wild, keep us safe. There's nothing better than the roar of your fans. But in Nigeria, there's a roar that will not be heard again. With fewer than 50 lions left in the wild, they could be extinct in the next few years. From loss of habitat and prey, What's cute, harmless, and depends on its mother for food and protection? Well, me of course. But also a shy little creature called the pangolin. Hundreds of thousands of pangolins are hunted and killed every year just for their meat and scales. If we continue this way, the pangolins will soon disappear. We can't allow this to happen. Tell your families and friends to say no to illegal bush meat from pangolins and other protected animals. Keep them wild. Keep us safe. Illegal bushmeat is on sale in our cities, risking extinction and our health. We've become a centre for ivory and pangolin smuggling. So please report wildlife crime and say no to illegal bushmeat. And let There's nothing better than the roar of your fans. But in Nigeria, there's a roar that will not be heard again. With fewer than 50 lions left in the wild, they could be extinct in the next few years. From loss of habitat and prey, and snares set for illegal bushmeat, Please say no to illegal bushmeat and let's keep the roar alive for Nigeria. Poaching steals from us all. Nigeria is Africa's most populous nation, with cultural and media influence throughout the entire continent. But it's facing a conservation crisis. Its wildlife and national parks are highly endangered by poaching and illegal logging. It's the epicenter of the illegal trade in ivory and pangolin scales. With tons of products representing thousands of animals seized in recent times by customs. It has strong demand for illegal bushmeat that endangers animals and risks introduction of zoonotic disease. But Nigeria could be a conservation leader. With Lagos leading the way, Nigeria is updating its wildlife legislation. It's improving its wildlife law enforcement and it's revolutionizing its public awareness. WildAid and its Nigerian partners are launching the largest ever conservation awareness program in Africa to drastically increase coverage of wildlife issues. Working with government agencies, working with the media. And what if we decided to protect our wildlife? After all, this is a multi-billion dollar industry currently employing over 3.6 million people on the African continent alone. Working with prominent Nigerian ambassadors. To report suspicious activity and wildlife crime. To promote Nigeria's national parks. To promote wildlife law enforcement. 
to raise awareness of the dangers of illegal bushmeat and to promote alternatives. Nigeria can go from crisis to becoming a leader in conservation. So let's do the right thing. Tell your families and friends to say no to illegal bushmeat. Keep them wild. Keep them wild. Keep them wild. Keep us safe. And keep us safe. Nigeria still has some breathtaking natural areas and national parks. These forests and wild places help maintain healthy ecosystems, clean rivers, rainfall, and even the oxygen we breathe. But if we allow our wildlife to be poached and our forests to be cut illegally, we may lose this forever. So let's do the right thing. Tell your families and friends not to buy illegal bushmeat or illegal timber from our protected forests. It's time to save our wildlife and forests in order to protect our natural heritage. Keep them wild, keep us safe.